Democrats may have won the 2020 election thanks to historic voter turnout, but Republicans are busy at work ensuring that doesn't happen again. A wave of voter suppression bills is flooding into state houses across the country. In Biden's first 100 days alone, state-level Republicans introduced more than 360 bills to restrict voting rights. But how have Republican officials in different states introduced legislation so quickly, seemingly in lockstep? And is the Republican Party looking to do more than restrict voter access? One of the most egregious things is that Republicans are changing who oversees elections in the first place. So that if they don't like the result of the election, they can have an easier time challenging votes and potentially not even certifying election outcomes. The Voting Rights Act dismantled discriminatory voting restrictions that existed under Jim Crow. But the GOP has spent several decades passing laws that make it harder to vote. And these laws disproportionately suppress voters and communities of color. Their go-to excuse for these laws? Voter fraud, which, by the way, rarely ever happens. Even so, 36 states have passed voter ID laws. So what are laws like these really about? Here's what one GOP official said way back in 2012 after Pennsylvania passed a voter ID law. Voter ID, which is going to allow Governor Romney to win the state of Pennsylvania. We spoke to Mother Jones reporter Ari Berman, who has written about voter suppression for the last several years, including in his 2016 book, Give Us the Ballot. Republicans have tried to suppress voting rights for the past two decades, but they've dramatically accelerated their voter suppression campaign in the last year, following Trump's big lie. And you have to remember, they are introducing a wave of new voting restrictions and passing them after an attempt to try to overturn an election and after an insurrection. And that's what makes this different. Today, some conservatives are openly talking about their mission to limit the rights of some voters. A Republican lawmaker in Arizona said that the party was passing these bills because, quote, quantity is important, but we have to look at the quality of votes as well. Their more egregious proposals show just how much the party's assault on democracy has escalated. Are you serious? No. In Georgia, where an upswing in black voter turnout contributed to Biden's victory in the state, Republicans proposed a ban on early voting on Sunday, seemingly to diminish the role of black churches in getting voters to the polls. This provision did make it into the final bill that was passed into law, but the new law did include limits on ballot drop boxes and restrictions on the use of absentee ballots. It even criminalizes the act of offering food or water to voters waiting in line. We talked to Ense Ufot, CEO of the New Georgia Voter Project, about the impact this bill will have on Georgia voters. There's nothing redeemable in this bill. Um, Not only does it create five new voting crimes, felonies and misdemeanors, um, but it also like severely restricts people's access to vote by mail, to drop boxes. It um, allows the state legislature to insert their will or replace the will of the people, the will of the voters with their own will. Georgia's new law also strips the Secretary of State of some election authorities. Republicans are changing who oversees elections in the first place that if they don't like the result of the election, they can have an easier time challenging votes and potentially not even certifying election outcomes. So you could have a state election board that is beholden to the Republican dominant legislature actually take over an election board in a heavily Democratic area in Atlanta, like Fulton County, Atlanta, for example, one of the most Democratic counties in the state. In Texas, Governor Greg Abbott has designated a voter suppression bill as an emergency item for the state legislature. In the midst of real emergencies like, you know, the ongoing pandemic, the Texas Tribune reports that the bill would reduce the number of polling places in urban areas, particularly areas that have higher shares of voters of color. Initial versions of the bill contained other shocking provisions. There's a provision that says that partisan poll challengers can record voters who need assistance, which raises all sorts of concerns about voter intimidation. And if election officials want to remove those poll challengers, the election officials themselves could be hit with a criminal penalty. 
Giving poll watchers this kind of power would have an outsized impact on voters from marginalized communities, since voters who need assistance are more likely to have a disability or have limited English proficiency. Several complaints about Republican-aligned observers were reported in 2020, according to Harris County officials. And this year, when Harris County Republicans launched their so-called Election Integrity Brigade, they openly stated that they wanted poll watchers from the suburbs to observe precincts in the heart of Houston, where more voters of color reside. This video was leaked from a meeting of Harris County Republicans. We've got to get folks in, in, in these suburbs out here that have um, you know, a lot of Republican folks that got to have the courage. If we don't do that, you know, this fraud down in here is really going to continue. The Texas bill also originally included language with a racist history. Are you aware that references to, quote, purity of the ballot box used throughout this country's history has been a justification for states to disenfranchise groups they deem unfit to vote or somehow lacking? After this history was pointed out, the line was removed. With these bills, Republicans are even trying to restrict voting options that they've supported in the past. The fascinating thing is that in places like Florida and Georgia, it was Republicans that promoted mail voting and that used mail voting in much higher numbers than Democrats until 2020. And it was only when Democrats uh, started using mail voting at a higher rate than Republicans that they decided to crack down on mail voting. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis went on to sign that state's election bill on live TV. On that note, let's bring in Florida's governor. Fox Ron and Friends, to be specific. So right now I have what we think is the, the strongest election integrity measures in the country. I'm actually going to sign it right here. It's going to take effect. His team said the ceremony was a Fox exclusive and barred other members of the media from attending the event. So why are Republicans so proudly touting these bills to their voters? Republican elected officials have done something incredibly cynical, which is they have lied to their supporters that the election was stolen or rigged in some fashion. Then they're now citing the fact that their supporters believe those lies as a reason to make it harder to vote. So it's a completely manufactured controversy. A May 2021 poll found that 61% of Republicans believe that the 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump. Perpetuating this lie has become necessary for Republicans to stay in good standing with the rest of the party. Now, let's go back to our initial question. How do Republican officials in different states pass such similar legislation so quickly? Well, a network of dark money groups and conservative think tanks has played an essential role in turning Trump's big lie into bills that suppress the right to vote. As we create this echo chamber, we're working with these state legislators to make sure they have all of the information they need to draft the bills. In some cases, we actually draft them for them, or we have a sentinel on our behalf give them the model legislation. So it has that grassroots, you know, from the bottom up uh, type of vibe. Mother Jones and Documented obtained leaked video of a top conservative think tank and political organization, Heritage Action for America, basically bragging to top donors that they are writing what they call model legislation, are restricting voting rights in key battleground states like Georgia and Texas and Arizona. Any state can take our policy recommendations, but we have honed in on these eight specific focused states because they are battleground states. In a completely behind the scenes manner, our democracy is being held captive by big money by special interests. Some of these groups are also mobilizing against Democrats two bills to protect voting rights at the federal level, the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Conservative leaders are so threatened by the For the People Act that they hold a weekly strategy call to discuss how to defeat the legislation. Whether or not these bills pass at the federal level, organizers on the ground in these states will play a key role in protecting voting rights. Here's how the New Georgia Project plans to combat voter suppression in the state. Doing everything that we can to have overwhelming participation, even in municipal elections, um, and the way that we design our voter protection programs, right? Um, our mobile apps that we're building so that basically it's an SOS button in the New Georgia Project app. So, so I've been in line for four hours um, so that we can deploy resources to investigate, seeing what's going on, and see if we can be helpful. Um, I think all of those things are happening now. 
um, in advance of 2022. In addition to organizing voters, New Georgia Project will also be fighting the new laws in the courts. We are going to court and we are willing to sort of leverage and mortgage all of our resources to make sure that we get rid of this bill. And we are also, you know, working with our counterparts in other states or thinking about, you know, Arkansas and Texas and North Carolina and West Virginia to make sure that there's also a sort of litigation strategy that will help us push back against these anti-democratic uh, bills.